All right, so we starting over. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Um, this is gonna be the first video to start off my C school series. And Jensen here went to two C schools: dental lab and what's this one? Dental assist. And dental assist. So dental assist was first, and then dental lab. Um, a lot of people hit me up and asking questions about being a corpsman and stuff like that. But a lot of people don't know that there's different types of or different NECs or whatever of corpsman. So I'm an ABT. I'll do that video later. But dental assist is like one of the more popular, more common um, type of NECs they get at MEPS. That's like one of the only ones they give you at MEPS other mm -hmm. than just regular. Thank you so much. Other than just like regular corpsman. So she's just going to tell y'all a little bit about what she learned or whatever and different things, I guess, that you um, battled with because the Navy is something. So again, I'm Jensen, but we're gonna call me we're gonna we're gonna call me Jada. So my introduction, I was um, originally assigned as an HMDA. HMDA is Hospital Corpsman Dental Assistant. So that schooling is six month six weeks long, and the way the school is set up is all Navy. Other branches are different, but this one's all Navy. So the curriculum is broke down like a lecture and lab type of breakdown. So you do your lectures and then you do a teach back. So they'll give you the lecture and then you'll probably do a group activity, maybe split up into different groups to teach back what you just learned. Within the schooling, it's like two written tests, it's really easy. And then maybe five labs that are super easy as well. And have you made a um, um, hospital corpsman um, video? So if she told you in a hospital corpsman video, this A school for hospital corpsman is, it's not difficult. It's more or less um, challenging and kind of tedious, if that makes sense. So you have really long labs in a hospital corpsman basic, but in dental assist, they kind of help you along with the lab. So they prompt you and let you know where you're at in your lab. So it's a lot easier. And um, a, a pro, it sets you in that 1500. That is a very great time three o'clock i'll do it any day uh should i go into dental lab or now mm -hmm. okay so dental lab on the other hand is a completely different field i was very culture shocked when i walked downstairs and seen this so dental lab is six months long now the way you get dental lab is very much so it's very difficult to get in a lab. It's all about who you know and timing because the seats are barely ever available. They had three classes before us, I believe, that didn't have any seats available for Navy. So with that being said, um, the breakdown of it is the, um, it's a six week, it's a six, six courses and each course lasts six weeks long and you have a midterm and a final in every course, and every course has different instructors. So, and some more about that is that it's tri-service. So it's Army, Navy, and Air Force. You end at 16.45 every day, so damn near five o'clock. And Navy, because we came from hospital crewman basic, dental assist, you have to go to dental assist in order to do dental lab, and then you go into dental lab. So because of that, we're considered prior service, and so is Army. So you can hang out with Army, but Air Force, they're like quote-unquote boots, so you cannot hang out with um, Air Force because that's considered fraternization. So I know it's a lot. Wow. So I'm still in dental lab right now. I just entered course four, but to give you a little bit of insight on the courses, um, Course two, you're going to be doing dentures, a full set of dentures. And that's like, I consider it the quote unquote dental lab killer because in A school, we had like a Corman killer test. Course two is about 22 lectures. Which test was that? The first one. The first test about the history. Oh, yeah. That almost killed me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, got a, I got a freaking 76. When have you ever known me to get a 70? Like... I damn near fell, almost fell. Can I curse? No, I can't curse. So anyways, uh, course two is like, I call it dental lab killer because 22 lectures and some of the lectures you have a test right after you had the lecture. So you really gotta stay awake, you gotta be focused and stuff like that. And 
it's really fast paced so it's a, it's a little bit um it's actually a lot it's very stressful but course three is very smooth it's very laid back and then you have two tests and then you have your midterm and the rest the the rest of the testable material is labs it's very easy to remember labs and then i think it's two tests also before your final course four is a course that i'm in right now um oh i don't know if i mentioned it but course three is removable appliances so you have like in course three you make retainers you make mouth guards you make hard night guards you make a removable partial stuff like that and course four is all metal framework so you you're taking away the focus from big projects and making them little projects so now you're focusing on one tooth and perfecting one tooth so like crowns and stuff like that so um after course four you have course five six and they're put together i'm not exactly sure what that's made up of because i have not got there yet but from what i've heard it's not that bad um i really think i think that's How everything many courses is in there it's five six the last one five six the last one and i did miss something air force has to take course one navy and army do not because navy and army have prior medical and dental um experience meaning we know the parts of the tooth we know because we did dental assist school and in army were actual dental assistants air force is coming straight from boot camp so they have to take course one so you can learn the anatomy and stuff like that of like the mouth, the tooth, and all that extra stuff. So did that mean like they started before y'all? Yes, they go, they go in a week before us. Okay. So other than that, like I said before, dental lab is a lot more stressful, but I think it's a lot more worth I think it's more worth it. Worth, yeah, thank you. More worth it simply because it yeah, translates on the it. outside. Oh, okay. yes. You get, um, you go to the Air Force Community College you get credits for it. I think Navy only gets like 32. Air Force. That's a lot though. I know. But Air Force gets 36. So the way is, for, let me break it down a little bit more for you. You start off with um, dental lab basic, right? And that, I think you got to take like three more classes and then you can get your associate's degree. If you go into dental lab advanced, you take like nine more classes and you get your bachelor's degree. And they all count, like every class you take count and your degree is gonna be in dental science. So that translates on the outside, you have to do your CDT, obviously your CDT, whatever um, specialty you want your CDT in, that's what you get it in. So you got dentures, removal partials, metal frameworks, whatever you want, you just do your CDT in that and then boom, that's it. You gotta do one test and you're good for the, for the outside. Do you feel like um, you made a good decision as far as taking um, DA at METS or do you wish you had the opportunity to go into something else? Honestly, truly, I feel like everybody that ends up getting stuck with DA is pissed off at first. But once you actually realize, I've got two answers for that question, if that makes sense. Number one, the dental lab community is very small. So you know everybody, which means either it can go one or two ways. You can like mess it all up and like get a bad rep or you can do something with that. You know what I mean? Like you, you know, everybody, you know, they're all the right people you need to know. So you can use that to your advantage, neck ridding wise. Number two, if I wasn't DA, I can't see myself being a search tech, even though that's what I really wanted to do. I can't see myself doing what Jones does ABT simply because DA has three other avenues it can go down. You do DA, you can do dental lab basic, dental lab advanced, and also this thing called maxillofacial. I want to get to maxillofacial. Maxillofacial is basically prosthetics for ears, eyes, nose, stuff like that. It's like maxillary is that, up. That, is that another C school? It's another C school, yeah. But do they make y'all, like, can you go directly into it? Or do you have to... Do you have to go to your like first command and then get recommended from the command to go there? It's basically same thing I said before, all about who you know. Like I said, the dental community is very small, so you can the traditional route is um, DA school. Then you go into the fleet. It's really rare that you can be able to get into um, dental lab. Like I said, it's based off the of timing. Your your uh, who you know and if there's seats available. So if you do that great after dental lab basic 
you usually go to the fleet unless you, like I said, timing again, and you can get put into Dental Lab Advanced. But Dental Lab Advanced, there's no test at all. So it's all about your hands and how well you can perform in the lab. So that's why a lot of people say it's better for you to go to the fleet so you can better yourself and perfect your work. Now, after Dental Lab Basic, that's what, I mean, Dental Lab Advanced, that's when you get to Mexofacial. I don't know about you. I personally, it's a way you can do go straight into um all that stuff, like go to basic, then advanced, then maxofacial. Mm -hmm. But it's very rare and it's really hard. It's only like 13 maxofacials in the Navy. You see what I'm saying? So it's a very hard school. So me personally, I wouldn't recommend trying to go that route. I would just try to get as perfect as you can in the in the fleet and then I'm reapplying to go to the school. That's what I'm gonna do at least. I'm gonna try to do that. What advice would you give to somebody who is joining the Navy and joining uh for the simple fact that they wanted to go they want to go into the medical field but they don't know what they want to do. Would you suggest that they go in as just a corpsman or suggest that if they have DA available and that's what they're offered to take DA? It depends on what you're interested in. If you're interested in um, working with patients, working in a dental community, then go DA. If you're interested in, um, me personally, I'm not a people person. So I chose DA so I don't have to deal with patients as often, if that makes sense. So I'm okay with being in a lab and making prostheses and uh, dealing with patients on occasion. But if you're okay with dealing with patients, you know what I mean? and you know that you want to be in a dental field, go go for it. You know what I mean? But if you don't know, quad zero is always an option. You can always strike. You know what I'm saying? But it's just up to that person. How are, do you know how your, um, your seashore rotations are set up? Because mine, which this is going to be in my AVT video, but I found out after going to AVT school and stuff that our seashore rotations are different. Like quad zeros, I think, is every two years. Mm -hmm. Mine's is 36 months, which is every three years. So I'm on shore now for three years. And then if I stay in, then I'll go to sea for three years. So I'm not know? exactly sure how the rotation works because I'm not in the fleet yet. I'm still in school. But um, from what I've heard, uh, dental labs in the Navy at least can only get stationed but so many places. So it's really like a hit or miss from what I've heard, especially out of C school, your first duty station more than likely will be a um, a clinic, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I guess it's by chance. I, I don't really know. I know people that have been in dental lab and never been on a ship. I know people that have been in dental lab and love the ship, you know what I mean? All these shoes is the ship. So I don't really think there's a rotation but I could be wrong. I wouldn't take my word for it simply because there's not a lot of places for us to go. That makes sense. So do they, have they talked to you guys about like whether or not they place y'all in like their bigger hospitals or is that like more so what it is or? The way our orders are set up is we don't really have a say in what we want. They can, we can give a dream sheet and kind of give them a hint as to what we want, but you get what you get as out of C school. Me personally, I want to go to a bigger hospital because I feel like it's going to make me better in what I want to do. Because I don't want to do the left or I want to get to maxofacial. So I will be okay working on like an ADL, that's what it's called, and getting a whole bunch of work right now because it's only going to make me better for the future, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. But I know a few people that go to small clinics. One thing I can tell you for certain. Coming out of C school, you're not going to get put in a situation where you're the only dental lab assistant. I mean, dental dental lab tech. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have some help because they know you're new. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. I don't know if I have any more questions other than the ones that you answered already. Oh, negative. A negative thing and a positive thing for both dental assist and dental lab school. Um, a negative thing for dental assist, and please, the dental assist, don't crucify me. But I don't like the dental assist world on the inside or the outside. I've seen this very drama filled. That's what I heard, at least. And uh, on the outside, you don't really make that much money. Mm -hmm. And like, 
I don't know if you didn't know assist and they said the dentists treat them really bad. Like the dentists do nothing, but the dental assist do everything, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. And you also have to work around your patient schedule. I like to move on my own time. <laughs> that might be very selfish, but I can't with the patient schedule. Um, a pro for dental assist, the people you meet, like you everyone in the Navy always talk about how networking is a big part of your career. You're gonna meet everyone from everyone has to go to has to go to dental. You're gonna meet every rate that you you can depending on where you're stationed. So you're gonna have a lot of connections to get things done that you need to get done. If that makes sense. When it comes to dental lab, the positive about it is you get out, you make money. You're in me. You're working with your hands. If you love art, you're making art all day. Cool, whatever. Me, my pro is because. I'm alone. I don't have to be bothered too much. The con about it, leadership opportunities might get missed. Mm. Ranking up might be a little bit harder. Especially like in the Corman field in general. In the Corman field in general, but also you got to think you're in the lab all day. So if you're like me, you're not really a people person. It's going to be very hard for you to put yourself out there and do more things other than stay in the lab. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that my instructors harp on when it comes to us. Like, make sure you get out there and get your name known before you mess up and you have nobody to vouch for you when you need a recommendation, stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So, yeah. All right. So, that's all the questions that I have. And that's all the information she has for us. But before we go, I want to show y'all my earrings. And she's going to show you the ones that she has on. So, these are just basic hoops. But they have a lot of weight to them. Like, they're not, like, if I drop it, right? So, they're not, like, they don't even, like, bend easily. Or they're not whatever. flimsy. Like, yeah, they're not flimsy. These and the ones that she has on. Okay. I have Africa earrings. Yeah. Oh, so, these are them. called Motherland on my website. That's going to be down below in the description bar. And then these are called Alkaline. The reason I call these Alkaline, if you don't know, is because it basically means basic. <laughs> <laughs> it means basic so yeah that's how these are called alkaline but the both of these earrings are actually on sale on my website so if you guys just take a look at them um and also there is a promo code that is going to be downstairs from downstairs uh down below also so you can use your pro that promo code and get 10 percent off of your entire your entire purchase so yeah that's all that I have, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope it wasn't too lengthy, and I hope it gave you some information about both Dental Assist and Dental Lab School. Um, and like I said, this is the first to a series that I'm doing, so I'll be doing ABT probably next because that's just me, and then I have some other people lined up to do an interview with also. So, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in my next video.